Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna go over Cubase 11. Now I've just had some time to um, upgrade a lot of stuff on my rig because I had a couple of days in between projects and so I just dove into Cubase 11. I was on Cubase 10 before so I actually skipped the version but I just wanted to make a quick video about it because um, it has some to me groundbreaking features in it that are going to make everyone's workflow much easier. Now a lot of people even in my library videos have been asking me why don't you upgrade stuff sooner when it comes out. I think I've addressed this before but the main reason is if this is your main income stream and you have a lot of ongoing projects, overlapping projects, you can't just upgrade your core software when it comes out. A lot of the time stuff needs to be backwards compatible um, and updates can screw things up so you just don't want to risk it because lost time equals lost money if this is your income. So usually most composers will wait, you know, at least for the first update, um, meaning the rest of the user base has already found all the bugs and everything that was wrong and um, you know, the developer has released an update to address this. And so now we can switch pretty much. Now it's safe to do so. But like I said, sometimes I even skip a version. Uh, I would just went from 10 to 11. Before that, I was on 7.5 for quite a while um, before I went to 10. So, you know, not everybody always goes to every version of the software. If I'm busy for an entire year or one and a half years, Cubase releases a new version, I think, every November, so, you know, this just isn't always an option for me if I'm in the middle of a bunch of projects that are just ongoing or where I'm doing a lot of sequels or something like that, then I just can't upgrade until all of that work is done. And so sometimes that's, you know, two versions further. So first things first, the upgrade went well, nothing happened, all of my presets are still there, everything is still, you know, all of my settings are still retained. So nothing bad happened. That to me is always the number one worry when I hit that upgrade button. It's like, oh my god, I hope when I open my template everything's still gonna be the same. Uh, so that was the case. So that's good. It's particularly important with your core software because if something in Cubase isn't working, then, you know, I have a serious problem. <laughs> so let's dive into the first new feature that is, I think, going to make everybody's life so much easier. Cubase always had great export functions, great batch export functions, but now they just have so many more options it's incre it's groundbreaking, I think. I don't think any other DAW has this. So if you go into the export window, you will see the usual functions that we already had. We already had multiple batch export, but what you can do now is you can also export reverb inserts or whatever you have on your master fader into your stems. It's great that I just made a bunch of template videos where I said this isn't possible. Uh, it's possible now. <laughs> Great. Thanks. <laughs> um, I mean, before that, it was kind of already possible by uh, some people pointed that out that you can side chain stuff from the master fader into the groups. Um, but in my case, I use ozone on my master fader. So that wasn't actually possible because ozone doesn't have a side chain input. But now none of that is an issue which is going to be great for anybody who has limited resources because, um, you know, copying multiple instances of reverb or ozone is really resource heavy. So you're not going to have that issue anymore. So what you can do here is you can either select the channels you want to export right here, or you can even also just link this selection right here and just um, what it will do is say I go into my group stems right here and I click on the flute and all the woodwinds say I just want to export the woodwinds I can just click on these um, and then here you can select inserts and strip meaning you want all the um, 
all the reverb delay and whatever you have on there uh, printed in there. You can also use disabled, which is the usual dry stems that it was before, which is what I honestly need the most anyway. So this was not a major issue for me because uh, I usually print dry stems for my mixer. Um, but you can also now uh, use groups and sends or the one that I'm the most excited about, master groups and sends. Um, I'm just going to have to remember if I need to print dry stems, I now need to deactivate the reverb uh, so that that doesn't get printed. But that's so much easier than what I've been doing in order to get the master effects onto my group stems. So now I can just select that and then add to queue. So now you will have this batch, it'll export seven files in these presets that you have, WAVE 48K, 24-bit. This is the, um, the effects that you selected. You can also update it if you want something else. So, but here's something even cooler. Say I also want these stems now dry. I can just select dry and add them to a new queue. So now I get them with all the effects and none of the effects. And say I also want, I don't know, an MP3 version of it. So then I click on MP3, I select my, that's good. I select everything. I can even change the sample rate, whatever I want. You can insert ID3 tags for the MP3s and enter that here, which is cool. And then um, same thing, add them to the queue and now you're going to have a batch of stems that are mp3, 441, 320 kilobits, and dry. So you have unlimited possibilities here. You can export in any format, any stems, whatever you want with any effects on them, however you want in just one export. This is amazing. I like this. I like this so much. <laughs> Another thing you can do, I'm not that excited about it, but uh, I think song producers might be excited about that, which is you can also export different ranges um, that you selected in a song, different loop points uh, by itself. And then also queue those up and export every all of those in one go instead of having to do them all separately. This is really quite amazing. I don't I don't know what else to say about this. This is going to save so much time. Something else that is new is it's also uh, creating a separate mix down folder. Remember in the previous versions, um, Cubase would export all the audio into the same folder that it also has the imported audio, like all the audio files would just be in one folder, which can be a bit confusing. Now it creates a separate mix down folder, which is uh, similar to what Pro Tools has, pretty much. It also has a separate bounce files folder so that it's separate from um, the, uh, the audio bin, pretty much. So another new feature, it's not new, new. It's new for me because I skipped uh, Cubase 10.5. Um, the uh, video export is new. Now, a lot of you that aren't using Cubase are going to say, wait, Cubase didn't have video export? Yeah, it didn't. It used to have it back on 7.5. I remember Cubase had something, but it was bad. It was it was not good. It, it could only replace the entire audio file inside the video and like for the entire duration of the video. It, it was it was bad. Then eventually they just abandoned that feature entirely. Um, until version 10.5, where they reintroduced the export to video function. Where is it? Uh, export video. Here it is. Um, so you can even add timecode, which is kind of nice. But other than that, it's just a regular export to video function like we are used to from any other DAW. Um, so far, I've been using Pro Tools for this or sometimes Logic. I don't know how well it works yet. I haven't tried it yet. So I'm gonna have to do a whole project with it and then just kind of see if if this actually works well. Um, I would hope so. This would, this would solve an extra step for me because then I don't always have to go back into Pro Tools or launch another DAW to do this. 
I know some of my additional writers are using video editing software to merge the audio with the picture. So it's kind of nice if we can, you know, get rid of that. Another new feature that I really like, I didn't know I wanted this, but um, we have it now. It's, let's go into the MIDI edit window. What you can do in here now is you can go to global tracks and you can actually display the global tracks that you have in your main session, like markers, the signature track, tempo track, video track. It's incredibly useful. I don't know why that wasn't there before. I didn't know I wanted this, but now that I have it, I wonder why we didn't have it before. It's great, thank you. <laughs> There are also some new MIDI editing features that are really, really cool. Um, let's take a look at that. So first of all, something that always bothered me. Uh, let's go to pitch bend. So something that is new is that you can now set the pitch bend lane to show semitones there. And you can also determine the range. So it doesn't have to be a whole step. It can also just be, you know, a whole octave or whatever you want it to be and then it gets displayed like that. Let's get rid of this stuff for now. Before that it was kind of this weird thing, let me use the pencil tool, where it would just be this and it will go to value, what is it, 8191? I don't know why. I'm sure there's some kind of explanation why, but I mean, musically speaking, it doesn't really make sense. So you always kind of had to eyeball where the half step is. So somewhere around like 4,000, somewhere here. That's a bit stupid. So um, I'm, I'm glad they fixed that and this is not a thing anymore. So now you can just have it set to semitones and it's done. Another thing that I personally find super, super useful, let's get rid of this. Um, let's go to expression, which I use a lot. So what you can do now is, let's say I'm working in the grid, right? So I'm doing, so I'm doing this and this and this and whatever. Um, I would have to move out of the grid in order to make these, um, to smooth, the, smooth these out. So what I can do now though is you have, you can see these little dots here, which will do this and I love it. So now you don't even have to switch the mode anymore. You can just do anything with this, however you like. I mean, this is amazing. I think it's so much more flexible than what we had before where you had to switch between these different things in order to do something and you constantly had to switch between um, grid mode and non-grid mode. Now you can even in the grid just be flexible in between the dots that you set. So that's also just really, really helpful. I think that's going to speed up a lot of stuff for me because I fix a lot of automation all the time. You also now have um, this little white dot. I don't know if that's new in Cubase 11 or 10.5, but it definitely wasn't there in 10, I remember that. Um, so it shows you a little bit better if you're over here, what note your mouse is actually hovering over. And if you enter a note, also I don't know if that's new that the note name is displayed there. Something that is new is double click now deletes a MIDI note. And I don't know if I like that. I feel like that can cause a lot of trouble down the line. Um, so I don't, I haven't seen yet if you can disable that, but I'm, I'm very unsure about that improvement, <laughs> to be honest. That can make me delete a lot of notes accidentally, I think. Some of the colors appear to be new. Um, my send effects are now orange for some reason. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way if that corresponds with like the default track color of effects or something. I don't know why it's orange. Um, I don't know if it's orange for everyone uh, or if it's just something I set up, uh, but it's new. Also something new is, or I'm pretty sure it's a bug. Um, these tracks are supposed to be black, as you can see right over here. 
And if I pick any other color, it does take the color, but when I go to black, it just goes into this default lime green gray whatever color that is um that's only an issue in the mix window though i don't know if if that's just a mistake or something also it appears that the um the the color inside the the fader the, the meter color has changed i think it used to be blue I've just updated and I've already forgotten. But it's green now and then goes into yellow and red, I think. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Um, kind of makes more sense, I think. I think that's also how it is in Pro Tools, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, I think it makes more sense than blue, but I don't know if that's a bug or if that's a feature. <laughs> But I kind of like it, so whatever. Then there's also a new um, really, really cool plugin that they, an audio plugin that they have in there, which is an, an it's called Frequency 2, uh, which is a uh, dynamic equalizer, but it's kind of a mixed plugin where you can set each frequency band to be dynamic or not, and each of them can also be side-chained to something else or not. But each of them work independently, which is kind of cool. So you can side-chain um, different frequency bands to different inputs, and you know individually you can decide which ones of them are going to be just regular EQ and which ones are going to react as a dynamic EQ. Um, so that's kind of cool. That's a very um, versatile tool, I think, that I will probably incorporate into my template at some point. There's also a new plugin called Spectral Layers 1, which is really great for audio cleanup. It reminds me a lot of uh, Isotope RX, so if you already have that, uh, you're probably not as excited about that. Um, one feature that it has, which is kind of cool, is it can separate vocals from songs. So if you need to create remixes and you need to separate the vocal lines from the instrumental, it can do that very effectively, so that's quite nice. And then it, of course, has a bunch of other um, features. The overall look has improved. I think that's because I'm on Windows and they've change some scaling options or something for Windows specifically. Um, there's a new imager, there are new score editor features available, new fonts and stuff like that. There's an EDM plugin called Squasher, there's an audio analyzer uh, called, what was it called, Supervision. There are new overall sample sets available and, you know, many other minor features that um, don't come as much into play as the features that I've pointed out. Because uh, I think, especially for film people, this is going to speed up the process so much. It's going to cut out so many processes in the middle that um, this upgrade is definitely worth it. I think this is probably one of the best upgrades, uh, Cubase upgrades that I've ever made. So I would definitely recommend that. I hope this was helpful. Um, I was holding off on this for a long time and uh, I'm not regretting upgrading. So uh, yeah, if you're still stuck on Cubase 10 or 10.5, obviously wait until you're in between projects. Uh, but then I would definitely um, take the leap because this is um, a massive improvement, I think.